Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. My name is Babu and I have made this video session in reference to one of the prescribed articles in relation to understanding economics and environmental policy. I have been assigned to prepare a critical summary of the article of Li Shen Jun Lin et al. Published in 2013, which is titled on Evaluating Cash for Countries, a program that affects automobile sales and environment. The main reason for doing this presentation is to understand economics and environmental benefits and outcomes associated with this article. Before I go through, I would like to take the opportunity to say something about the relationship between economics and environmental policy. Economics and environmental policy are two significant interrelated public policy due to the fact that economics create methods to ensure that the resources of our environment are not overconsumed, demolished, or misused. It deals with the scarce resource by setting strategies to ensure that the costs and benefits of environmental issues are well balanced. Environment is where all living creatures live and get the resources that they need for living, such as water, air, oil, gas, fishes, and forests. However, when resources are overconsumed, destroyed, or misused, this can result in environmental degradation, and therefore, environmental policy is required to address strategies to ensure that environment is protected and, and meet national and international standards of sustainable economic development. However, this article provides qualitative and quantitative analysis grounded on empirical basis by evaluating the effects of cash for countries, which is a federal strategy devised in 2009, which is a $3 billion program trying to stimulate U.S. economy and improve its environment and social sectors. The main goal of this program, cash for countries, is to provide clients with 3000 500 US and 4,500 as a rebate to trade in their old cars for low fuel inefficient and purchase fuel efficient new cars considered to be friendly in environment. The environmental outcome of this program is to reduce gasoline consumption and carbon oxide emissions by only 8.2 million tons based on upper and lower bounds of the estimate of the program effect on sales implying a cost per ton ranging, ranging from 92 to 288 US dollar even after accounting for a reduced criteria bulletins. The findings of this report are based on the assessment or evaluation on how effective the program was to support eligible customers to have new auto, replacing the old vehicles. Although the program has made transactions of 600,000, 600,359 customers at a cost of 2.8 billion in the first month, the program has failed to balance consumers' demand, demand from ineligible vehicles to eligible in the long term. As a result of this, the article argues that the program has reduced sales rather than increasing sales. Before and after the program started in June 2009, Although it has achieved a little bit environmental benefits and due to economic perspective, it has had to accomplish several goals with a single policy. The article argues that the program has impacted 
local car manufacturers where foreign companies have made marginal benefits. Using, using difference in difference approach with the Canada as a control group, the article examined program effects on vital cells for different time horizons, as well as its impact on pollutant emissions and gasoline consumption. The reduction consumption, the reduction in gasoline consumption ranges from 924.5 to 2,107.3 million gallons, well that in carbon oxide ranges from 92 to 29.8 million, as stated before. The article provides counterfactual analysis as an important method for estimating the environmental benefits of the program. It argues that failing to analyze the contractual fleet without the program can thus underestimate the program's environmental benefit. To prove these claims, the article provides empirical evidence drawn from a wide range of sources and data, although there is still insufficient information on where the program has attained its goals. The article concludes that the program provided a little economic stimulus beyond the late 2009 overall. The format of this article is well written and presented as it captures the essence of the connections and relationship between environmental policy and economics. Thank you for listening and hope to hear from your comments.